No, no ball pits at DravoCon. No. Um, let's just uh, go chaos mode on this one and see what <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Welcome to the Dropout Drop In, the show where we campaign for Dropout to get an Emmy. And this week we're going full chaos mode. Let's talk Dropout Con. It's going to be so much fun. Jordan, you and I are the two people that have just been campaigning relentlessly with pitches to Sam for what yep. this could look like, what this could feel like, when it should happen. I'd like to, rather than, you know, intro off the top as we've done every week, why don't you state some qualifications that you have for planning Dropout Con? Give us the, the old resume pitch. Sure. Um, so one thing I can't talk about yet. Um, uh, so stay tuned for future episodes of the Dropout Drop-In. Um, uh, but... Uh, um, I have interviewed, uh, boy, I don't actually have a total number, but I would say the most number of people that work at Dropout of any human being on the planet, um, and most of them being crew. Um, obviously, a, a Dropout super fan, but, um, but yeah, I also uh, have event planning experience. Um, I, I'm, I helped plan what is considered the most successful retreat at my company, um, uh, and... Uh, uh, yeah, like I, I get, I get what the people want, and I know a lot of the folks that we would be inviting to said dropout con. I love it. That feels like the right Venn diagram of like can make people happy, can make talent happy. Like you've got yeah. that. Like the Venn diagram's a circle. It's just yeah. one one thing. I have interviewed no one at dropout. So I'm on. <laughs> I'm the other side of the Venn diagram, and we're gonna figure out what this middle ground is that we can both mesh on together. I also am an event planner and a conference planner. If you don't know where the producer and producer Liz comes from, it's a long range of planning everything from television to digital productions, like what Dropout does. Um, and more recently than not, doing a lot more in-person, like conference planning style, in-person production, which is very different from remote production. Let me tell you, if you look at what <laughs> Dropout did during the pandemic versus what they can do now, that's the vibe. That's the vibe. So give me your technical run of show. Give me your main stage production. Your girl can take it. Um, and then Jordan can balance it out with all of the talent production and wrangling, which is a very important producer role that kind of makes or breaks the entire thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a good balance. Um, balance. Yeah, I, I've, I've already pitched Sam to be the... Uh, I, I, my original pitch was just to be the like master of ceremonies, uh, 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 moderator person, but now I'm expanding out to uh, uh, let me just plan Dropout Con for you. Just plan um, the whole uh, thing. Just plan yeah. the whole thing. And you know what? I think that uh, we know how much Dropout loves soliciting from the audience and copy and pasting directly into what they do. That's sarcasm because they explicitly say not to do yes. that for those of you that don't know. Uh, so we thought, why not just lay out the entire convention live for the public internet to give feedback on? And then Sam can use that as a starting point for planning. Maybe we'll shave off a few briefs from agencies that don't know much about Dropout and just get to a closer picture to move that timeline up. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember what Sam committed to in terms of a timeline for Dropout Con? Yeah, so in the first mention of Dropout Con, it was five years out. Um, uh, and I negotiated him down in the, my interview with him to three years. Uh, and uh, uh, he told me just to keep my 2027 calendar open uh, for when Dropout Con was going to happen. So we've, we've, we've knocked it down a full two years in just like month and a half since he first mentioned the idea. And um, we all so. thank you for that. That very <laughs> important work to get it closer. So 2027, we're keeping it clear, keeping it open. Maybe this video, maybe we'll get it down to 2026. Who's yeah. to say? Personally, 18 months, minimum perfect runway for planning something like this. So Sam, you yeah. just take a month or two to boil this over in your brain and then let Jordan and I know when we can start. And speaking of when we should start, I am watching the clocks in 15 minutes. The next round of the auction for week two of the dropout auction is starting. So if you don't know what's happening, auction.dropout.tv is where you can find minis from uh, Fantasy High. Jun not junior year, that's the one currently airing. We're talking freshman year season one of Fantasy High. And all the proceeds are going to PCRF, Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. Um, so make sure if you can to go bid and support. And if you can't bid, like many of us, we've been very clear on this show yeah. that we are unable to participate in this because the prices have gone so astronomically yeah. high, which is an excellent success for the, the donations that are going to be happening. Um, you can share the news with your, as Jordan would say, with your rich, your rich friends who, yeah. who may be able to participate. 
Yeah, or donate. You can donate directly to the PCR. Donate directly. Also, what, what a fantastic have. cause. Yeah, um, yeah. Look, if you're watching this video, you, you're probably not bidding on it. Um, uh, it's they're out of control. Do you want to give us the the rog uh, uh, update? So currently, rog is sitting at one thousand sixty nine dollars. And we must True. say that the chaos in the auction today is really prevalent. People are having a fun time with these bids, and, and you are one of the instigators of today's chaos, if you'd like yes. to share what yeah. you did at the start yeah, of this so one. I, I hopped on a little late. I normally like to hop on right away and hit a $50 bid, take my screenshot, and get out. Um, but I hopped on a little late. I saw that Riz was sitting at like 350 so I popped in a bid of 420.69, hit submit, took my screenshot, instantly outbid, but I had the screenshot, so... Um, uh, and shout out, to, shout out to shout out to smoking glue guns who took a picture of the bid at that that point in the bid uh, and texted it to me not knowing I was the person that had caused that. It's so funny, like the Jordan Brown brand is so strong. People are like, oh, Jordan would really be interested in that. Yeah. No, Jordan yeah. instigated that. Yeah. It's the same energy as a uh, week two of this podcast when you were like, someone commented on my Reddit post about the dropout <laughs> drop-in that I should be a guest on the dropout yeah. drop-in, not realizing I was already a part of it. Yes. And I was, I was asking, I, it was me asking for feedback and they're like, you should get Jordan Brown. I'm like, great news. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do I have news for you? Yeah. The man, the myth, the legend, Jordan Brown, <laughs> dropout drop-in every week. Um, Let's talk about the legacy we can make with Dropout Con. Let's get into it. For the rules for everyone playing along with us. And I do encourage you, if you're watching or listening, to play along in the comments on YouTube. Um, we'll be going through and responding to your ideas because I'm sure when you watch this, you're going to be like, why didn't they say this obvious thing? So say the things in the comments. Add to our, our wish list for Sam. We're playing by NFL rules, which means this is a draft. Cue like draft non copywritten type music here if I have time to edit it in and if not you can just imagine it in, in your brain uh, we're all you know dimension 20 people we can do some you know theater of the mind here um, Jordan and I are going to go back and forth drafting what we would have happen at dropout con we cannot take an idea once the other person has said it we have four categories no more than five choices in each maximum um, and we'll go through the four rounds one by one we have a little wheel here that I will share onto my screen. One second here, let me get rid of the ads because we don't give corporations free ad space on this show, that's for sure. You can email me at lizduffteam at shifted.digital if that's of interest to you. Uh, let's see, all right. We're gonna pick who goes first with this fun little wheel. So that way it is, uh, you know, Jordan, could, you could win every time. You could be going first every single draft. <laughs> which based on the amount of prep we did would probably be better since you have had a bunch of ideas. Oh, but the wheels decided I yeah. will improv first. Uh, Jordan, do you want to pick our first category from the four we have listed? Well, let's, let's hold off on main stage. Um, uh, so that like, like we, people, people have to stick around to see what our big, like grand like ideas it. are. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, how about, I th uh, breakouts are truly one of my favorite things about cons, like the smaller panels where you get to be in a more intimate setting with some cool folks. Uh, so 100%. Yeah. I'm right there Workshop, with you. The, workshops, the panels, really Q&As, AMAs, breakout oh. sessions. Okay, I love it. My first round draft pick for an intimate breakout at Dropout Con is Grant, the bartender, oh, doing a good. how to make custom cocktails class. I'm imagining this is like happy hour, interactive. It's like very intimate. And I imagine it's like not long classes. It's like you make one drink, you take your drink and leave, and then another class can come in, make a different drink and leave. And maybe for an hour, Grant gets through a few different groups like that. And that way, your cocktail hour is all like custom cocktails that you got to make with Grant, the bartender. I know that's that fair. that idea has food and beverage and health and safety kind of stipulations around it, but that's for Sam to figure out, not me. I'm just pitching it. I mean, uh, they, they, there are food cons. I, I've been to a, uh, 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 what was the top chef? What do they, they win a oh, trip yeah. to? Oh, yeah, 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 I didn't go to the Aspen one. I went to the food and wine show or whatever the hell it's yeah, called yeah, yeah. in Austin one year. Then they gave us food. Uh, it's possible. Um, Everything's possible. We just gotta look, get, I'm gonna, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a shout out to my South by Southwest experience from about seven years ago, where the state of Wisconsin brought a cheese board that included 100 different types of cheeses. Um, and I texted my uh, wife, we weren't married yet, I don't think, 
No, we weren't. And I said, guess how many different types of cheeses I tried today? And she said, ten. And I said, that is true, but it would also be true if you multiplied it by ten. Um, uh, and she was like, that feels like too much. And I was like, it wasn't. Um, so Never enough. That yeah. actually yeah. sounds like my perfect day. That's my was, last meal right there. Yeah. That's yeah. just a hundred different cheeses on a board. A hundred, mm -hmm. hundred different cheeses on a board. Um, uh, Love it. Boy, we are off the rails instantly. <laughs> um, Wait, I said off the top, everyone listening, this is a chaos mode episode of the yeah. Dropout Drop-In. Uh, Jordan, your first draft pick for breakout sessions. Christina Ariel, myself, host a Housewives watch party. Um, uh, we pick uh, one of her favorite episodes. Maybe we do Miami so that we can talk uh, Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, we get together. Obviously, Izzy and Glenn certainly more than welcome to join. Um, but I, I, I can, I'm confident that I can reach Christina and pitch the idea to her. Um, uh, wow. Yes. I'm thrilled, actually. That is absolutely brilliant. I will be reserving a spot, please. And whatever tier package yeah. gets you to the front of the line for breakout sessions, I'll be, I'll be there, please. Yeah, it would be so much fun. Um, so as a person who doesn't watch The Housewives, I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, and as someone who has spoken to Christina at length about The Housewives, she's very good at explaining things that I don't understand. It makes a good it. balance, I think. So, so good. I'm obsessed. I really want to go down like the Q&A panel kind of wrote i want to take a bunch of people that played ttrg ttrpg <laughs> i'm not editing at that time i just can't say that word tabletop role-playing games for the first time on dropout and do a panel mm -hmm. about their experience learning to play it while they were being filmed knowing it was going on dropout because i think that's such a unique experience of like you literally just jumped into the deep end did it for the first time live or did like a new style for the first time live tried something new dig into that like how did you build the trust to do it what did you think of the experience are you addicted to playing now and kind of flush out that journey um and i think that that would be so fun to have hosted by like maybe like a bria but also someone maybe if there's someone in the dropout cast that has never played on dimension 20 but plays in their own time and mm -hmm. make that kind of the tone of it like it's not always about the people that play all the time or are more of the top talent in Dimension 20. It's about how it's for everybody and make it a little bit more yeah. accessible. I mean, Vic plays and has not been in the dome, just saying. All right. But, but you Vic don't get up. Vic. Vic is <laughs> okay. mine. Uh, no, okay, that's fair. That's fair. It wasn't uh, in my pitch. Yeah. That's what I actually have a title for. It's You Will Be Remembered. <gasps> Um, and it's the camera people of Dropout, very specifically the uh, person running the camera who Lou Wilson screamed at um, during the ga uh, uh, Escape the Green Room. Uh, but like, it's Kevin Stiller, the DP, um, and then uh, uh, the camera person whose name I have forgotten, apologies. Um, uh, and uh, like maybe a couple other like uh, behind the scenes folks uh, um, uh, uh, and have them talk about what it's like to make. Uh, the wildest content imaginable. <laughs> I love that so much. I feel like the Q&A would go crazy in yeah. that kind of situation. <laughs> so much fun. I feel like you could also do that with like a, like that idea with like a whole bunch of different instances, like just broad oh, programming stream, a whole track of just like different behind the scenes combos of folks and like mm -hmm. their specialties. Okay, that's gonna be my next pitch. A whole stream of content that's just panels of like a bunch of DPs, a bunch of people from, like Rick Perry's team, like get all the different creative teams behind the scenes to have their own panel moment. Yeah, yeah, I love it, yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, back to you, that was my next yeah. pitch. Thank you for uh, tossing uh, that one my way. <laughs> yep, um, so this one is very specific. Uh, so my assumption is we're building an app for uh, Dropout Con because yeah. no good con is like functioning on like a website. You need an app to be running it. Uh, an um actually interactive uh, um, portion to the app um, mm. um, that allows like gives you like a push notification of like the like the statement um, and you have to like type in your answer and obviously a bunch of people are gonna get it right. Um, but it's one of those, like, if you're one of the fastest and correct, like, you get automatically entered into, I don't know, winning a prize, getting to, you know, getting, a, a like, a picture on the I'm um, Actually set that we've built here, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I love uh, that. Uh, 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 good, good old interactive app usage. That's so funny. I'm actually obsessed with that. 
love. Um, yeah. That'd be a great way to give out merch, like exclusive mm-hmm. mer- merch drops via I'm Actually Trivia. Okay, my next pitch, and this might be my last pitch because I feel like my ideas are going to start getting repetitive here with just like one thing that you could plug a whole bunch of different people into. Shit, I got so excited about your idea. What was it? <laughs> Hold on, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. Oscars Monday. Hard day to record a podcast. Understandable. Okay. My last idea for breakouts is doing a college humor original kind of setup where you get a whole bunch of people that did the college humor videos back in the day and force them to rewatch those videos and react to them in the future and give us like the behind the scenes and like, did it age well? And what did you learn from doing it? And yeah, nostalgia bait. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Get, get. Mm -hmm. Get Brandon to talk about the uh, him holding a turd in his hand while mm-hmm. he debates uh, the merits of online uh, uh, argumentation. Um, yep. oh, so good. So um, good. All right, well, we're closing out there. I mean, a really easy one, but obviously you got to have fan panels. Um, you, you get you get Don Marshall to come. Of course, he'll be there uh, uh, to talk about, you know, the importance of Lord of the Rings culture in Dropout or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, like a slew of fan panels of like, hey, here's why Dropout is important to the to our community at large uh, uh, and really celebrate folks like that. I feel like there's so many different angles you could go with, like the fan yeah. side of like like what submission panels would people want to run like that it's such a broad net that dropout offers mm-hmm. 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 on my mind my producer mind is loving this game i have so many ideas we shall move on okay you know what i'm gonna pick the next category and i'm gonna let you go first for this next okay. one talent moments taking mm-hmm. a standard meet and greet experience or signing to the next level moments to mingle and meet with dropout talent Boy, I am ready to crush my opening pitch. Karaoke night with dropout stars. Uh, you get to sign up. You get to sing. Um, uh, uh, if Rashawn wants to hop on and do backup vocals with you, there's like an open invitation to any of the like the dropout folks to come sing with you as you like sing. Um, but like a big karaoke party that like Rashawn is going to pop in and do some songs. You know, Ross, whoever, uh, yeah. Jess, Zach, whoever we can get to like come sing. Uh, um, well, not only sing, but potentially join in. If if you pick a song they love, they might come join you on stage. There's just always another mic ready for someone to yeah. come in. Ah, oh, that is so good. I love the idea of tossing meet and greets out the window and just creating more meaningful memory moments and like stopping at a picture. Like I'd so much rather <laughs> sing karaoke with someone than get two seconds in a photo and then walk away. I feel like that's such a cool vibe. That's just my personal opinion, though. I feel like some people would still want the standard stuff, which is also great. Well, we we got to have the standard stuff just so that we can pay the talent uh, yeah, what they deserve absolutely. to be there. Um, like, make it worth their while. So, like, you sit and you, you sell your, your headshots and you sign those for two hours or whatever and you, you make your yeah. cash real quick. Um, exactly. That's how you get, like, the bottom line fed. Mm-hmm. Um, I would take it to the next level and I would host some kind of... Uh, meme creation challenge where it's like there's a time block and a limited number of seats and maybe there's also like arena seating so people can watch you get people like dimension 20 memes like all the big meme accounts there is like the contestants and a few other people that have signed up through the con and then what happens is like a surprise panel of talent walks out on stage and you have x amount of time to generate or find the funniest meme of that person from dropout content. So like if Zach Oyama yeah. walks on stage, you have to pop out like any kind of meme content based around Zach Oyama, and then he picks the funniest one and you win something, maybe something signed yeah. by him or like a mini or just like something really uh, specific to Zach and it rotates that. like that. It's Jackbox, but uh, with like Dimension 20 memes. Love it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, this is the one that I'm the, probably the weakest on. Cause like in my head, like I have the like, oh, well the standard obviously like meet and greet standard professional pictures. Cause I'm like, well, you know, like look, if, if, we're, if we're getting, you know, Brendan Lee Mulligan to show up, um, we're going to pay him for his time. Um, like it's going to, we're going to make it worth his while to be there. And um, he's got a someone child's college fund to start yeah, building up. Uh, the, we gotta, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, um, yeah, I, oh man, I think, you know, it would be, um, and this is sort of playing off the last, uh, not my last idea, but the, the, um, actually idea of having like 
um, an um actually fan tournament where mm. um, like you can like I mean you know it might just be like all right you know, it's similar to the like Grant cocktail hour of just like all right you want to come you like you get to come like try your hand at an um actually question we got a bunch of them built um uh, and you know like let's power through a bunch of like contestants getting to roll on stage maybe it is like the winners of the interactive uh, uh, uh app get to then like compete live in front of the audience um i knew when i talked to iffy uh, uh he talked about oh man the uh, like dropout super fan or, or whatever like came on the show of uh, and just like mopped the floor with everyone he was like yeah that's it's like you, you get real contestants up there. They're going to kill it. Um, so it would be fun yeah. to see like people like deep, deep nerds who are like, no, I've got the answer here. There's no guessing. I know. Um, I, I know that uh, in my case, the, the, the I've tagged you in this, the, the Vistani can move back and forth in Curse of Strahd. I, I said that out loud. And my wife was like, great job, babe. Um, <laughs> I was like, the Vistani can the Vistani are not held by the fog. They can go back and forth. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm obsessed. I also feel like you could toss in people that really cannot compete to, mm-hmm. like, show the... Like, if you have a bunch of really smart and intense players, then they balance each other out. But to- just toss in one person who has no idea what's going on and have them, like, also take a stab at it. I think yeah. that would be hysterical. I don't know who that would be, but find the person that knows nothing and also toss them in there. Yes. Have a good Very time. Good. I'm ready to go for that. I know virtually <laughs> nothing. Um, <laughs> well, you so far this season of I'm actually are far ahead of me after one episode because I got a fat goose egg on the last one. So we'll see if tonight's episode changes. Or not tonight. Tonight is Sam Says, which <sighs> is I'm going to throw a party for one wait. to celebrate. Yeah. Big <sighs> night. Um, so good. But Presumably. we'll see if this week's I'm, I'm actually, if I can tally the score up a little bit from nada. Okay. Shout Mine. out to it's Saltzman and Trap and Lily Do, but like Saltzman and Trap being on the couch is so exciting. Um, it's oh, going to yeah. be a fun um actually week. I'm so excited to see Lily Do wrangle them in. Like, there's yep. no way she's on that couch letting them like overtake the show from her. I I just think the dynamic's going to be whoever chose that dynamic. I love you. It's very good. Yeah, I have a parasocial relationship with whoever made that decision <laughs> because I just big fan, big fan. Okay, my next talent moment is in a similar vein to yours, a little bit more chaotic on brand with, you know, all of my ideas in this episode. I would love to create, this kind of goes into something I'm going to say in the round two, so I'm going to repeat myself later a little bit, but I'd love to create sets that are photo ops. So you could like take a photo Mm -hmm. behind the game changer booth, take a photo on the I'm actually couch, but then randomly throughout the con, like the person associated with that show shows up on set and takes like 10 photos and leaves. So you never know who's going to pop up where or when and it encourages people to like take photos, interact with everything. So maybe you're taking a photo in the dome and like Brennan shows up and takes five photos and leaves. Like five people got a photo with Brennan in the dome. Five people got a photo with Iffy on the I'm Actually couch. Like kind of do really fun surprise stuff to kind of, again, level the playing field. If you can't afford to do the meet and greet stuff, there's like lots of surprise opportunities for someone to Mm -hmm. just appear and be around. Yeah, Yeah, I love that. Uh, and I would also say, I would throw in some random stuff. Like, you have someone not associated with the show just randomly show up and be like, I'm here now. Would you like a photo with me? Like, just, you know, make it a little chaotic, too. So sort of in a similar vein, uh, if anyone went to, I think it was Universal Studios um, in, let's say, the 90s, there was a thing you could do where you would be on, um, like, a Star Trek set. Um, and you like read, you were like a green screen, like Star Trek set and you like got to dress in a little costume and red lines, um, that, but it's a breaking news set and you and like three of your friends get to try to read a script, um, and like make it through and see like who can break the least. Uh, and then afterwards you get that video that you can have forever. That is so insane. I'm obsessed. And yes, it is something they do at like a lot of the studio tours. You can walk in and do the interactive thing and it auto edits it. I just posted the, um, when you go to the Academy Museum for the Oscars, they have the Oscar interactive experience and they do a whole edit in real time of you accepting an Oscar and it gets sent to you right away. It's like so, so fun. Yeah, Yeah. I love that. I would just walk through it again and again all day trying to do better next time. (laughs) That's so fun. Okay, my last idea here is going back to kind of like the standard baseline of all of this, I would do a signing, but only for people who bring their own art or like have some kind of competition for like 
it has to be vetted ahead of time, but like the craziest thing you could want signed by a Dropout cast member. Like, and you have to connect it back to the show. So either you made something that you're gonna get signed or you have like fan art or you have costuming or like something that you want someone to sign for you, or you make the furthest reaching connection and it approves you to go in and get it signed. So like, I don't really know what these things would be, but like maybe you have like a takeout bag or something from Applebee's. This is someone that lives in Canada. I don't know what takeout bags from Applebee's look like, but you like take that to the Allie Beardsley signing and you go, well, Allie Beardsley plays Kristen Applebee. So therefore yeah. this is a relevant object to get Allie to sign. Just see what kinds of crazy shit people can connect to specific dropout lore. I think that would happen even if it wasn't an official thing. <laughs> I think someone would show up with an Applebee's bag and be like sign this please sign this um, please yeah i think if you and, announced it ahead of time people yes, would get yeah, yeah. wild about it and that's kind of that's the twist as someone who's attended a lot of cons uh giancarlo esposito at cons sells box cutters that he will sign um so that you can get a picture of him pretend slashing your throat um gus fring style because so many people were bringing them he was just like i figured i'd sell them myself um, genius so, yeah. So, um, so genius. So yep. good. I, I think it's sort of in a similar vein, uh, but this is specifically to be the uh, anti-capitalism of it all. Yep. Um, is that uh, you can bring anything you want to get signed and there is no charge for that. They're selling headshots and like maybe they do sell. Like I think it's a great idea to see like maybe, you know, like uh, people who make really cool art. Uh, I'm thinking like, like Julia Stark makes like fantastic art uh, every week. Um, um, you know, maybe they get, like, they commission some artists, Kate May, whoever, right, of, mm -hmm. like, here's some, like, professional art that we have had commissioned, you can buy that and have the cast sign it, um, but if you bring, you know, uh, um, I'm trying to think of, uh, your, uh, Sam, your Sam, uh, your Game Changer poster season six, Sam will sign it, uh, um, you can also buy it there, uh, like, yeah. you know, like, if you, if you own something, bring it in, they'll sign it. I love that, yeah, 100%, I think... The right balance of level the playing field for folks and offer the like inclusive offer the opportunities people will pay for and also give that mm -hmm. kind of fr whatever the free tier option of it is so so good i love the idea of rather than having like headshots of people like commissioning custom art as the thing that people would sign i think that's yeah that's so cool like you don't really get a headshot fun. of zach oyama signed you get a gorga fan art yeah. by kate may not fan art yeah. it would be official art from the show but you know what i mean yes. like get the gorga yes. thing signed so so good yeah. you get you get tommy shrigley fan art um you get um but so also would, uh, would brennan sign for all the npcs for yeah, his yeah i guess so yeah, yeah. Um, get your wrist ready your brian and running you're yeah. signing um uh, uh kate in real life i don't know what, that's her handle on instagram who's like the set photographer you gotta sell like her official like photos like you gotta sell the like Tommy Shrigley posed like in an actual professional photo as well because it's simply too good. Um, too uh, good. But yeah, like they have a bunch of those anyway. Like you could just you know print those out on glossies. Uh, uh, it's brilliant. And then you know uh, Kate in real life gets extra cash for it. Let's say. Yeah, let's uh, let's spin the wheel again. See. All right, Jordan. Do you want to pick category or do you want to go first next? Oh boy. I mean. I mean, I th well, I'll go. I'll go first, I suppose. Okay. Um, so you let's, can pick category. Let's do expo floor because I, I like okay. your idea of save the the big main stage slots yeah. for last. I think that's the right way to do it. So, expo floor activations, exhibits, freestanding spaces, places to enjoy, all the fun stuff that makes a convention center feel like not a convention center, but not home. Some weird liminal space in between. What yeah. do you want to see? I mean, obviously, uh, it's uh, um, we're, it's it's classic con. You got art, you got dice, you got you're you're tangentially connected to the space. Come sell your wares, um, like like yeah. Of course, I want to see like your Dimension Twenty, your Dropout fan art, but I also want to see something that you're like, hey, I bet this crowd really loves our flag means death, and here's my be gay do piracy art, um, like uh, uh, like that like for sure is gonna be a seller there as well. Um, uh, so like big art space uh, um, where people can buy. Just like I mean, uh, maybe standard con is not like the right idea, but like heavy Dropout, also other stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Like having a build a, built by attendees museum or something that you can contribute and add to and builds over the, the time of the convention that's not just specific to dropout. I love it. Um 
I'm gonna go back to my idea I said a while ago to get it on the board formally, which is taking the all the sets from Dropout and building them as walkthrough photo op experiences throughout. Mm -hmm. So you have, I'm um, actually, you've got Game Changer, you've got the dome, build them out, let people inside of them, let them sit down, let them pretend they're on the show and get a photo and then get out of there. Yeah. So now that I've tossed that formally on the board as my first slot, which shouldn't be a surprise. So Jordan, back to you, go ahead and steal, steal a slot, probably another brilliant idea. Oh man, I just had one, and then I got excited about the thought of sitting in the dome and getting a picture taken, <laughs> even if it's the fake a fake dome. Um, uh, this is the episode that broke us. That, <laughs> yeah. Um, so definitely not heavily edited moment. Um, <laughs> Dimension Twenty Silent Auction Minis live on the premises. Um, Brilliant. Uh, you get to I, I, obviously they're behind glass because no one's going to be touching these minis because they're going up for auction. But you can go see the minis in person, write your bids down. Uh, um, uh, we'll raise a billion dollars in person. I think my next idea would be to build dirty laundry sets, like plural and not as like a set to go take photos in, but to encourage people who don't know each other to sit together and story share and meet each other and break the ice a little bit easier. I'm always interested in different ways to help people find a way to be social if you're more introverted or more nervous or you just need like an icebreaker. So I would set up a whole whack of dirty laundry themed like socializing spaces to encourage story sharing and cards on the table to prompt like funny storytelling and just, you know, sharing across people so you can make new friends and do it in a fun kind of dropout way. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna piggyback and steal. Uh, have a lounge set up that's got a bunch of copies of the Um Actually board game. Yeah. Um, just like ready to go, and people can sit down and play a game if they need some time to recharge. Obviously, lounges a key component of any good con. Um, like, yeah, have have a place to recharge, but also like a nice little quiet, not quiet, but you know, like a space yeah. where you can play. You can play some games with your friends. Uh, play some Dimension Twenty Um Actually questions because. Um, it's going to be the only place that you can like truly appreciate uh, how much people know about the show. True. Very true. And I think outlining that to be like, have you ever wanted to play I'm um, Actually with people who are on your level? Yeah. <laughs> Specific space for that. I also love the idea of just having intentional quieter spaces, right? So if you're getting overstimulated by mm -hmm. main hall, which who, who's not when they go to yeah. these things, you have a space to go to. On that note, I would build out coffee shops where all of the mugs and cups are mug of the month themed. So all of the designs for the mugs on the drop out store mm -hmm. are printed onto like recyclable cups, but then they also have a limited stock of those mugs that you can purchase if you order your coffee. And then it changes every day, like whatever the mug is for that day. It's also very good. Um, uh, Fun, right? I, yeah. I also, as someone that uh, like genuinely drinks an obscene amount of coffee, I would just rotate through, get yeah. all the mugs, no problem. Yeah. And so, all right, my last one then. Um, it's the it's the it's the warehouse merch clearing out table of just like, hey, here's everything that's gone out of stock, um, but like we have you know five left or whatever. Um, uh, it's available here, first come, first serve. Um, but because obviously you're gonna sell all all the merch, but like specifically a place that's like here's the pin of the month that you missed that we have, you know, a hundred extra of. of. Yeah, it's just jungle um, down vims. The yes, whole table yeah. is just jungle down. <laughs> just galere plushies that need to be yeah. adopted. Yeah, exactly. Um, I would also one up like add into the auction rare merch but it's just like this one t-shirt there's only extra smalls left this yeah. one random thing in one size and that's all that's left the last t-shirt that's like a medium yeah, that get, didn't get sell the old roll for panic attack design uh like whatever you've got left yeah yeah very good I, if sam's actually watching this i would like a roll for panic attack <laughs> shirt i am devastated that i don't have one but that's we can take that up later. Uh, that can be part of the exchange of services here. We plan the con for you. I got a roll for panic attack shirt, very on brand for planning something like this. We can continue. Um, one thing that we haven't said that I don't have a fully flushed idea around, so feel free to jump on this, but I, I think it has to fit in here somehow is doing some kind of pin trading and having like mm -hmm. a really clear system for what 
pins are around, what pins you can trade. Maybe there's like a pin passport for like every drop up pin that's ever existed, but then you can also bring your own if you make pins or if you want to bring things to trade, like some kind of trading system that's yeah, I, not I paid. Remember, yeah. Uh, um, when they did the like mystery pin of the month, um, where you could like uh, uh, sign up and you just, because uh, sort of where that idea just came from of like, they clearly had some old pins of the month that were just like hanging around and you could just buy one. Um, there was like a full Reddit thread where people were like, hey, I got this one I already own. Does anyone want to trade for something else? And like people were able to like negotiate trades on like pins that they had already bought um, when they bought the random pin of the month. But yeah, I love I love the idea of like uh, I show up and I'm like, hey, you know what? I never got I never got the uh, the only pin I can think of off the top of my head is the junk mother. Uh, oh, like yeah, I didn't get the junk yeah, mother, yeah. and I would love it. <clears throat> the pin I desperately want, um, uh, brighter than the wind, swifter than the sun. I didn't get that pin because it was so early in Burrow's End, I didn't know how much Burrow's End was going to change my life um, and devastated that I didn't buy it. So that is one that like, I would love to show up and be like, hey, I've got, you know, I'm ready to trade. Like, I've got my yep. pins on my backpack. Let's go. I've actually gotten beef about that pin that I would like. I might be starting a blood feud, a blood war feud with Abrea for saying this, but I think they launched that pin way too early. That yeah, should have been agreed. the last pin of the show. A thousand percent, because the way that it hits with that finale, I was like, we didn't know what we had till it was gone. Yeah, that's that's exactly how I feel. I was yeah. like, I'm very selective about the pins I buy. I um, agree. Both for like space reasons as well as financial reasons. And so I was like, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, like I, th that's very fun, but like I, I don't think I need that one. And then like at the end of the show, I was like, I want that more than anything in the world. Um, <laughs> I will give a shout out to whoever wrote in, I believe it was the newsletter, but it might have actually been the copy on the website recently where um, this was about ordering the collection of pins and someone mm -hmm. did put the line in, or are you an international fan and you don't want to pay to ship all the pins yes. individually? I was like, I feel seen. I am just yeah. across your border Ooh. and it is so yeah. expensive to get a jungle down pin, jungle down bim pin. That yeah, is a tongue twister to Canada. So yes, felt very yeah. seen by that. As an American who has a lot of international like online friends, I under I feel your pain uh, with your my, low low price of ten thousand dollars to acquire and ship <laughs> something to international yeah. friends. I'm sure you get a lot of business that way. It's mm -hmm. imperative. Yes, so good. My last idea for the expo floor, Jordan. You know when you go to McDonald's and there's those like self-order like big interactive okay. I displays. Was, I was concerned you were about to suggest a ball pit and I was like oh you don't have a deep lore of conventions if you're suggesting I that. I uh, listen scarred for life after what happened at that. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's like in my event planning I would never ever in a million years. Ah oh, that's so funny. No no ball pits at Drop Out Con. No. Um, think of those like interactive displays that you can like order from. Mm -hmm. It's that but then it takes a photo of you. And then in whatever customizations you've picked, um, it will like send a request to draw you to that artist on site. So you would have like, do you want the Kate May style like drawing? Do you want like have all these artists available and say like, I would like to be drawn like in the same style as this character or this color or this thing, like just a really basic, like not a super intense elaborate thing and then by the end of the con or like by a certain date that's been determined that artist sends you back your custom like basically yeah. like a profile picture maker you know what i mean so you can change yes. all your social images to your your dropout animated version yeah. of whatever you want that. yeah i'd be so fun i personally yeah. would go for like a gorgug vibe i want to be green i want those big dark eyes and i want a a big old something cool that I'm carrying because I could never carry something heavy in real life. Yeah, that's fair. No. What would you pick if you could get like a custom Ooh, cartoony boy. animation done of yourself? Um, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, my instinct is uh, uh, like VIP style, uh, just like just really fuck my world up. Um, and just like, uh, uh, make, make me a monster. Um, make me uh, a monster. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Just custom prosthetics. Just change the mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah. Love it. So funny. Okay. Well, we're going to main stage headliners for our last, so we won't spin the wheel. Um, I'm feeling generous also because I started the first two. I had the first two choices. So I will allow you to pick. Do you want to start? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Obviously okay. it's Vic. 
Um, and it's VIP Live, and God, I've given this so much thought. I'm okay. so excited about this. Vic and I come out, and we do like an hour of crowd work, basically. Mm -hmm. Like I interview them, we talk about the show, we do Q&A, all the while the audience can see on screens backstage one of the comedians getting put into full prosthetics or makeup and whatever. Vic and I cannot see it. Um, so we don't know what's going to happen. And then after that, like, hour of them putting this person into makeup, Vic goes backstage. They get, like, a minute. Um, we don't see the uh, them building the character. That's going to be, like, dropout.tv exclusive later when they air the episode, because obviously we're recording this. Um, but then, like, they come out on stage. Obviously, I'm gone at this point. Uh, and uh, Vic does like a full VIP li episode live with the person uh, uh, that has been thrown into prosthetics. I've given it so much thought. <laughs> wow, I'm blown away. That is genius, truly. <laughs> it would be like it would be like every bit of it. Like I love. Because, I mean, not just because it's my idea, but, like, I love the idea of, like, Vic on stage, people are laughing at, like, what they're watching on the screen, and Vic doesn't know what's happening. Like, like you just know that, like, oh, something wild is changing back there. Obviously, yeah. it means it's probably not going to be a Denzel or a Tommy Shrigley, because it's not going to have, you know, the three hours of makeup that those probably needed, but, you know, you know something a little simpler, um, mm -hmm. but yet, like, you get, like, a full VIP live experience. I wonder if there could be, like, an element that's voted on by the audience in real time. Like, this wig or this wig? Like, vote on the app now. Like, if there's some kind of element that people could feed into. Oh, I love that. So, so good. Okay. I, as a Dirty Laundry fan, I want live Dirty Laundry. Sam is obviously on the couch. Like, 100% he is participating mm -hmm. in this. Um, but all of the things that are being questioned and the secrets that are put into the mix have to be related to working at Dropout. So all the stories are like, you know, I took this from craft services and never said, or like, I'm the one that accidentally like destroyed this thing, or I'm the one that like did this, or no one knows, I snuck back into the office one day and like did this. So it feels more like behind the scenes, like stories that normally wouldn't be told personal, but more succinct to Dropout. Yeah. That's very good. That would and be very, very And then it's very, very funny because fun. your boss is on the couch with you. So it's like right. you've submitted all these secrets and Sam's also playing. Yes. It would be very good. I have an idea for a Game Changer Live. Okay. Um, and um, it is, of course, a Mess with Brennan episode um, where, um, like, Sam is backstage and someone, like, whoever's, like, warming up the crowd doesn't have to be me, but I'm available. Um, um, gives explicit instructions that it's going to be a prompt, whatever, the comedians do their thing, and then the audience votes on who gets points, um, and we select one person in the crowd to exclusively clap for Brennan, and then no one else will clap for him, <laughs> um, and... Um, uh, and just like watch him melt down in real time. Oh, um, nightmare fuel! It's just like that episode of Game Changer with um, Izzy and uh, oh my god, I just rewatched it the other day. Um, and Erica and what was the other person that was on it? And the they had to go based on the audience clapping or not around the set. Yes, and, yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Climbing the yeah. fridge and pick up the phone. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like yeah. that on steroids. Oh, that's yeah. evil, Jordan. I love it. Oh. <laughs> I might have to edit that out just so Sam doesn't hear it. We gotta, he's gotta pay you for that quality of ideas. It's so good. Oh my god, I had a similar pitch for Game Changer Live where it's Sam says, but mm -hmm. the concept is like it's Sam says all day on main stage. So there's like mm -hmm. some kind of main stage programming that goes for multiple hours with like all these different things happening, and a set of contestants is decided ahead of time, and they start the main stage with this and they do maybe like 10 minutes like a couple questions and then they leave but then at any time throughout main stage sam can say like sam says blah 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 and the contestants have to be ready to come back on stage and do something else and then i also think you would like put it throughout the audience so it's like sam says go sit in the nosebleeds for the next thing and then you have like whoever it is like going back to the back of the stadium and having to like sit in a specific chair or something or yeah. like go interview someone in the audience or like i don't know like i feel like you make it really interactive like find someone in the audience willing to give you a snack or like find someone in the audience who is willing to come on stage and do a dance with you something like yeah. super like that um, it's very fun. but 
Yeah. I think that would be a fun way of like convincing people to watch main stage all day and like mm-hmm. not go do other things on the conventions that are floors. You'd have to find the right time to do it to not take away from everything else happening. Yeah. yeah. Convention I just love the hard. idea. Imagine being in the middle of dirty laundry and it's like Sam says, like, come do an Irish jig and people like run back on stage and like do an Irish jig and leave. Yeah. It'd be very good. Uh, uh, I'm just yeah. saying, Sam, we got lots to work with here. Okay, yeah. your turn. Um, I mean, obviously, D20 Live, we could skip right past that one. I'm so it's glad a, you said that. Easy one. given, right? Yeah. Like, of course. Um, I would love to see, like, this is, I mean, I, I think, like, if Brennan and Abria conversation about storytelling on stage, like, I mean, it's a panel, but it's it's a main stage panel for sure. Yeah. Um, of just, like, the two of them. Uh, look, if you want to bring in Matt, they can bring in Matt. But, like, like if we're, we're, I mean, this is also a thing that, like, they could do basically every year with any yeah. number of DMs. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, year one to really, like, pop. Uh, it's yeah. Brennan and Abria, like, talking, like, storytelling. Um, one of the uh, reasons and, and, like, why building. that would be good is it would guarantee sales. Yeah. Just if, if you were really nervous about doing this and you're not convinced people would come, <laughs> there is your headliner that would convince people to buy tickets. Yeah. I would uh, tack on to this, not stealing a slot from our ideas, but stating the obvious kind of ideas. Uh, Dimension 20, live, yes. One-shot stories that can be posted later to drop out, yes. I'd also do NADPOD and World to be on Numbers live as like every, if it's like a multi-day con, you do like Dimension 20 one day, mm-hmm. you do NADPOD another day. Get yeah, Jasper just do a across whole the pond album. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get uh, Jasper across the pond again. That's, that's my next LA demand. Right <laughs> Right now, actually. Oh, no, 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 he's in, I think he's on the Joko cruise right now. Uh, Is uh, he? I saw that yeah. he um, brought Siobhan the gluten-free yes. whatever it was, and I was like, I feel represented, but I'd be such a great fit in the Drabo community <laughs> simply for the fact of gluten-free recommendations yeah. and snacks. I, I could bring a whole suitcase full. <laughs> Just saying. Anytime yeah. you want to fly me down, I will bring the snacks. There are a lot of shows that you could do live that I think would work really well live. Big Sam Reich, Big Sam Reich Q&A, everyone goes um, and gets to ask questions. Look, as someone who saw a massive spike in Patreon subscribers when I interviewed Sam, people want to hear from him. Um, People uh, got questions. uh, Yeah. Open Happy to moderate one. it, Sam. Um, yeah. Um. You're ready. You're ready. Yeah. I think and I'll say I'm that. happy to be the one who says, ask a question. Don't pitch something. Sam's nice. He's not going to tell you. I will cut you off uh, if you start, like, rambling incoherently. I'm ready. I'm ready to bring the hammer down. It's like X Factor where there's, like, three big X's on the screen <laughs> and you have, if the audience gets three X's, the Q&A is over and Sam's off yeah. the stage. <laughs> really keep people in line. Yeah. No, I agree. There's tons of different shows you could do live. Like, I feel like Play It By Ear is another example of one mm-hmm. that would, like, it's such an obvious fit for something that could happen live. Make some noise. Obviously, you could do live. Bring in, like, Wayne Brady as a special guest. Bring in, like, all the guys from Who's Line as special guests. There's just, like, so much fun you can have there. I'm trying to think of what I would pitch as, like, your big finale. Because I feel like any of the ideas we've said would work as, like, your grand opening kind of pieces. How would you end Dropout Con? Oh boy, um, it's tough, right? Like, there's so many, yeah. so many things you could do. I mean, I think D20 Live is probably like your your closer of um, like last night of the con. Although you yeah, like also main stage, obviously like cosplay contest, of course. Um, yeah. Um, like that's that's classics. super easy. Your convention yeah. classic. Yeah yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and I, I, think... I don't mind. I don't mind that as a closer either, because um, a lot of times, like you know, like it's a. Um, things are kind of winding down uh, um, and people have like lost steam by the end and you don't want to be like, and here's the most intense thing of the convention. Um, but yeah, See, uh, do you, I would you have closer go, thoughts? I would go the exact opposite route and I would give the most intense experience physically possible for a dropout fan to experience. Stay with me, Jordan. Mm-hmm. Dropout meets Marvel Hall H and it's a presentation <laughs> of a new slate of seasons and shows and teasers and cast members and like all of these big surprises announced live and that's where convention ends so you just leave on the adrenaline of everything that's that's to come yeah that's so funny i had that thought um and i didn't but it wasn't my closer thought um like uh just like you have the trailers um or like people show up and like we've got new shows just like like not even talk about just 
tease. Uh, literally just be like, here's the name of a show. And then any trailers that you have as well cut uh, to be like, and here's what... I mean, uh, uh, what Gastronauts is going to be here, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Um, uh, you bring 100%. you bring the cast out, cast out uh, for like here's the people responsible. They answer like three questions, or even like full Marvel thing where they just come out and wave and then leave and then leave. Um, yeah, <laughs> not yeah. a microphone to be seen. Yep. You have uh, one person that... just in full costume. It's Vic. It's just Vic yeah. in host Vic costume. Yep. They're like waving like a president yep. and then walking off stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, it. I lo- no, I do. I do love the 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 Hall H of it all. It's fantastic. I love the idea of the story of the convention moving from like celebrating we're together. You have your Q and A with Sam. You have your more like interactive, fun stuff. Celebrating, like looking backwards, looking at the current moment, like revisit some of the college humor stuff, like revisit mm-hmm. like the first season of Fantasy High, like revisit like your roots and get into all of like the custom art and mini mini auction and like all these pieces that are more about how dropout has grown and then you end with like the future and this is what's to come and continue being a fan and you saw it first because you value the past and you value what we've built so it's like the future's for you and it's not just a big old marketing pitch not that Mm -hmm. i'm aiming that specifically at anyone but i just think valuing your fan base and their feedback is really critical so that's yeah. my that's my final pitch for this. Any other things you want to put on the table? No, I think we've I think we've planned a very fantastic convention that's ready to go. Twenty twenty six at the latest. I think honestly, late twenty twenty five at this point. We've got so much like. Listen, gone. I have. Oh, I do have one more thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, like Los Angeles, the easiest place to do it because you're not going to have to pay travel um, yeah. for like anyone. The funniest place, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Oh, Jordan, that's a killer idea to close on. Uh, in fact, I feel like more people would go if you hosted it in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I think so. Uh, but... If you're doing that, then Sam has to do like a, a tourist guide. It's like a mm-hmm. map with like just... Crumbly the... Square. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jordan. Okay, we can't get better than that. So that's the note <laughs> we have to end on. Um, I Listen, I would attend. I'd fly in. I'd cross the border international. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Me and Jasper. I'll meet him. I'll meet him at the airport. It'll be great. But gluten free snacks for everyone. Um, just as we're closing this, I just refreshed the auction because a yes. bunch of new things have come online since we started recording. Um, Vulture sitting great at five hundred and fifty one USD. Riz is at six seventy six now. Very exciting. We're not quite in like that bananas territory. Did you bid on Gorthalax? I did not. Um, I do see the 42069, yes. 42069. I think you've started something that we will see continuously throughout this auction. Incredible work. Incredible work by one Jordan Brown setting the tone for (laughs) chaos at the auction. Um, We will be back next week. I think next week is the last week for the auction, correct? It was the three week. I thought Stint? it was four, but it's certainly possible is it four? it's four. I well, don't. Either right, next week we'll talk about it, and we'll see if that's the last week to talk about the auction or not. But um, keep an eye, if you can, if you're watching this in the future, then maybe just think about donating to PCRF if you're, you know, if you're around mm-hmm. and, and you have the means to do so. Uh, we'll be back next week with more Dropout Drop-In. We'll get back to our regularly scheduled analysis. Um, we have a lot to talk about next week. We've got more Game Changer to unpack Can't sam wait. says i'm actually fantasy high anything you want to make a wild speculation around before we go uh boy this has episode has melted my brain with creativity <laughs> um, i don't know if i've got any uh wild speculation there's um uh, uh, sam will release the three hour cut of sam says three he absolutely won't but there's my wild speculation nice. um, listen this is about wild levels of, of yeah chaos so yeah i'm with you that's absolutely going to happen um i'll match that and say that we're going to return to the vulture dimension we're not done Ooh. with vulture dimension after what we had last week on fantasy high junior year no no those animations were too strong that brand was too slick for us to toss it away after just one use no no so stupid so, so stupid st- complimentary um, yeah. uh, great work by everyone who yes. made the thing about Vulture Dimension, just quickly before we go, is that there were so many reasons why it wouldn't have worked. And it worked so perfectly. 
so perfectly. Yep. So perfectly. But we will come back with more analysis and, and intellectual thoughts on what Dropout is streaming next time on the Dropout drop in. In the meantime, auction, Emmy, hire us to play in your Dropout. <laughs> God. In that order. In that order. We'll see you next time.